Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. So excited about what we're going to share with you on today. On yesterday, we did a broadcast replay uh, I needed to uh, rest a little bit on Monday, and guess what? I let it carry over into yesterday, to God be the glory. Uh, but nevertheless, we are here with you on today with a fresh word from the Lord that I want to share with you. have been sitting on this word. Uh, you ever just had a word and you're sitting on that word? Uh, just soaking it in all for yourself until you get a release to share it. And uh, so I've been sitting on this particular word here and uh, sitting on another word uh, that the Holy Spirit was um, dropping down uh, within my spirit on this morning. And so I'm super excited and just oh god i am just excited in the lord and i pray that you are excited in the lord as well i pray that you are allowing god to work through you uh, for the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven uh, today i want to say to you many of you who have been given a work and you might have started off, you might have started off strong somewhere along the way. Uh, things might have tapered off. And guess what? That happens. Um, it does. It does happen. Uh, but in the word of God, there's this precious, precious uh, word of encouragement in the word of God that I want to share with you on today. And it is over in uh, 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter and the 10th verse. Uh, today our word is pick up the pace. It is time for you to pick up the pace. It is time for you to get back and uh, get back to work in what God has given unto you to do. And so uh, let me put this up on our screen. I did promise and I try and go in here and keep, uh, share the scripture text. Second uh, Corinthians eight and ten is our scripture text for today. Let me go ahead and read that, and uh, it says. Uh, over in 2 Corinthians 8 and 10 and herein I give my advice for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do but also to be forward a year ago now therefore be, perform the doing of it that as there was a readiness to will so there may be a performance also out of that which you have and so I want you to uh, whatever God has given unto you to do. And uh, Paul is encouraging uh, those who are in Corinthians to continue, pick up the pace where they started. They started a work, but something caused them to, to go slack. Something caused them to uh, become stagnant. And he's saying unto them, that work that you started, you had a will to do, uh, you, you had a desire to do, let's get back to it. Let's get back to what you started. Yes, life happens. It happens to all of us. We get sidetracked. Um, a lot of times, uh, the zeal that we started with um, it dwindles because things happen. Um, not everyone is as enthused as we were. And that might have put a damper 
into your excitement. But I don't want you to focus on the love of others or the excitement of others. I want you to um, find joy. I want you to return to your first love is what I want. I want you to just get back to work. What is inside of you is needed. It is needed like never before. And so I want to encourage your heart and your mind. It is time to pick up the pace. It is time to get back to work. Uh, you've had your break. <laughs> um, you've had your time off. Um, you've had your period of, of a sabbatical. I've heard some people say, hey, I'm taking a sabbatical. I'm taking some time off. Um, because you've just gotten overwhelmed and there was a lot on your plate. But here, the man of God is saying, he's giving his advice. And so I am giving my advice to you on today, uh, for this is expedient for you. Um, there, uh, there's a time to rest. There is. And there's a time to work. And the work, I believe, that many of us have, uh, we need to... Um, get in the position to get those things completed. Um, some things, some assignments that we have been given should have been completed a long time ago. I am the first partaker of this. I know there have been plenty of times where I'm praying to the Lord and I'm asking about something and the Holy Spirit reminds me of what I did not finish. Um, I actually share that in uh, two books, actually. Uh, one is the keys of promises where I sat on that book I was supposed to do the book and I sat on it and I did not publish it and uh, the Holy Spirit dealt with me about that and and so several times let's just be honest several times the Holy Spirit dealt with me about what I had not completed and so I got to work and then uh, earlier this year we did release the seven works of grace uh, that's something else that we were supposed to do. And, and to be honest with you, there are some other things uh, that we should have done already. And so I am most definitely the first partaker of the word that I'm sharing with you on today. That makes it even more precious. That makes it even more valuable that I can tell you that guess what? This word applies to me first. Uh, it hits me first. And then it is spread abroad. That's why sometimes when we are given a word, uh, we can't release it right then because we have to uh, take that word in and we have to go with the ouches and uh, we have to go through the repentance and we have to say this word is for me and I receive it. I thank you, Father God, for this word. And so you're talking to me. Let me read this again. This is 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, uh, 10th and the 11th verses. It says, and herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which in you have. And so that which has been placed in you, uh, it is a work God invites us to work with him. This right here goes along with uh, some teaching that we did on last week about working with God. Also, uh, if we're still in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, let me read the 5th verse. It says, And this they did not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. And so we, first of all, submit ourselves unto God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service. That is Romans 12 and 1. Let me get these additional scripture texts up on the monitor. And I pray that uh, in your spare time that you can read the scriptures. Let me first of all get that 
uh, 8 and 11 up there for you. And then also 2 Corinthians 8 and 5. We're looking at that. And then I also quoted Romans 12 and 1. And so that way you have access to the scripture text in which we are sharing on today. I encourage you to read the scriptures and uh, allow the Holy Spirit to minister unto you uh, in the place that you currently are. So first, we learn to work with God. That's, a, that's what we learn to do. We learn to work with God and we, we learn to work with God by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, by faith, first of all, and by allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in areas uh, that God has need of for what he has placed inside of each and every one of us. And so that zeal, what you had, um, you got the vision, you uh, heard God speak to you. It could be uh, covering a multitude of things. It could be uh, for an entrepreneur. It could be in ministry. Uh, it could be... Uh, even within your home, whatever God has given unto you to do, we're excited at first and, and we begin to uh, get a image of what it is that it's going to look like. And several things happen. Life happens. First of all, uh, we get sidetracked. How do we get sidetracked is uh, we allow the cares of the world to come in and uh, take our focus off of what God has called us to do when, in fact, we should learn balance. That's what we have to do. We have to learn balance and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Uh, early in the morning when you get up and you are starting your day, and, and I encourage you to pray. As Paul said, this is my advice, and so I'm going to share some advice with you. Uh, as you are up and you are greeting our Father, uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the day and acknowledging them, giving thanks and praise for keeping you and your household through the night and uh, just acknowledging God for his grace and mercy and then begin to ask him to lead and direct your day. Include him in your day, even with your same uh, routine of uh, breakfast uh, for the family, if that's what you do, going off to work, or even if you are at the home, whatever it is, include God in your day. Also ask him to reveal to you what has been set out against you. Uh, asking him by the Holy Spirit that your spiritual eyes are open, that your spiritual ears are open, because what happens is as we are praying for God to direct our day, the enemy uh, has already set up a plan. Now, he doesn't know the plans of God, and so he is watching us uh, distinctively to throw in distractions. So, even in the midst of your working, guess what? Uh, distractions come. Uh, even if you're in a time of prayer or fasting, distractions come during that time. Um, if you're fasting from, if you're praying and you're reading the word of God, uh, the phone might not ring at all. But the minute you get ready to get into a time of just in the presence of the Lord, of reading your word or in prayer, all of a sudden, listen, the phone is ringing, notifications coming in, uh, someone uh, at the door or uh, here's my favorite one I had something so important to tell you I have to tell you now well I'm going to tell you that God does not contradict himself and if it is your time of prayer then he is not going to send anyone to interrupt that time of prayer it just doesn't happen like that I don't believe so uh, because that is a time that you set aside. If you say, uh, make a commitment, and, and if you definitely get the instructions, I'm fasting from the phone for this hour. God is not going to have someone to call you. Um, it just does not happen. So we have to make sure that we are paying attention to distractions. Um, here's a great example. And we were talking about this in Bible study 
I, I'm sorry, Sunday school a couple of weeks ago about following the instructions of the Lord. And there is the example of the prophet who was told to go into an area and uh, to, to declare a word of the Lord. And he was instructed not to maintain uh, there, uh, not to stay, not to eat, uh, but to depart after he gave his word. Well, he allowed someone to come and distract him to um, get him off course. So I want to share that with you because we have to be careful about what it is that we allow to come in to distract us. So let's take a look at this particular passage of scripture. And it is over in 2 Kings. I want us to get back to work. Pick up pace. And like I said, I am the first partaker of this word. Let me see. That's in here. That's not the one I want to share. I want to share. All right. First Kings. So let's get that in there. We're looking at First Kings. And it, it starts at the very first verse. Um, so let's just put in uh, the 13th chapter. And I'm bringing in this particular component is because we want to make sure that we definitely follow the instructions given unto us and don't allow distractions to come. Over in 1 Kings, the 13th chapter, it talks about uh, the man of God from Judah. He is a prophet. Uh, beginning at the very first verse, it says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jehoabim stood by the star by the altar to burn incense and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said O altar altar thus says the Lord behold a child shall be born unto the house of David Josiah by name and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee and he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the Lord hath spoken behold the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out and so the word of the Lord that set came to him verse 8 um, let's back up uh, because he was asked to stay but he had in, in instructions not to do so. It says, And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. But, and he, he kept it at the first he did as God instructed him, but when we get over um, into verse 14, uh, it says here, Then went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that thou cometh from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee. Uh, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. 
and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord saying bring him back so do you see how that is definitely a conflict of what God had said to him when we're looking at the word over in 2 Corinthians we want to make sure that we follow the instructions given unto us by God do not deter from it so even as things come in to distract us we must recognize distractions we must recognize what was sent and what was not sent what is true and what is not true because truly the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and he wants to hinder the process of the work that God gave you he does not want you to complete it he does not want you to believe by faith he does not want you to move in obedience and so he will send a distraction and the distraction could seem genuine but once you know that God has instructed you to do something stay the course stay focused on what God told you to do it does not have to make sense to anyone else you really don't have time to explain to anyone else why it is that you do what you do and how you do it. Be obedient unto our Father which is in heaven. If you're just tuning in, you're tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and we're sharing with you on today. It's time to pick up the pace and we're looking at uh, our foundational scriptures is over in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. We took a look at the 5th verse and the 10th and the 11th verse. Uh, we're connecting this to a word we gave on last week about working with God. That's right. We are learning to work with God. And when we work with God, we have a clear understanding that it is by faith. And we must move in humility and in obedience. There is no other way. Allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. And I just want to encourage your hearts and your minds today that the work that you started, truly God said he will be with us even until the end. Uh, we're also encouraged in the word of God where he says that uh, he is faithful to complete the work that he has started within you. Yes, he is. God is faithful. We have to remain faithful. That's right. We have to remain faithful to what God has given unto us to do. And so you might have set aside a work or an assignment that God gave you to do. You might have. But as Paul gave some advice to encourage the people over in 2 Corinthians 8, 10, and 11, it says, And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. So this is saying that uh, they, they were encouraged, they were excited, but now time had passed, and they had not fulfilled the work that they were willing to do, that they had a zeal to do, that they had a desire to do. Something came along and shifted them and they did not fulfill that work that they were supposed to do. Now, not only um, that this happened during that time and we're dealing with um, Paul in the New Testament, we also have an example in the Old Testament where uh, God is encouraging uh, the work uh, of Zerubbabel through the prophet Haggai. Now that time was with Ezra, also with Nehemiah, and we have the prophet Haggai. He uh, worked alongside uh, Ezra as well as Nehemiah with the rebuilding of the temple and of the wall. So when we get over to Haggai, uh, I'm going to put this up as well. So study um, over in the book of Haggai. And you will find the same uh, teaching of, as we say, 
We're saying pick up the pace. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. We're saying pick up the pace. Uh, this right here, beginning at the very first verse, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zubarubaral, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jazdek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord about Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house be waste? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Mm -hmm. So, even in the Old, Old Testament, God is saying, hey, pick up the pace. Pick up the pace. I invited you to do a work. You were excited at the beginning with great zeal, but you got sidetracked. And what God has given unto you to do is going unfulfilled. Now we also have the clear understanding that what God has given us to do is not for us, but it is for others. So the gift that God gave unto you, it is for others. He utilizes individuals such as you and I on earth. That's why Ephesians 4 and 11 begins to say he gave some. Even when it comes to the spiritual gifts, not everyone carries the same spiritual gifts. And even if you do carry the same spiritual gift or ministry gift, you're not going to operate in that gift as others do. You're going to operate it, operate in it distinctively as you allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. So the book of Haggai and uh, Romans, uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. I have my Bible marked for Bible study tonight and it is marked on Romans the 8th chapter but Haggai the book of Haggai in 2nd Corinthians the 8th chapter the 5th verse along with the 10th and the 11th verse connect with one another as we begin to talk about picking up the pace let's get back to doing the work that God has called us to do uh, don't allow life to get you sidetracked and let me say this, there are certain things that we are supposed to do within a season of the vision. So every, uh, every portion of the vision has a certain season in which we are to do some work. When we look at uh, Nehemiah, um, at a certain time, uh, he dispatched for work to be done uh, at the gate and at different portions, even with the building of the temple. So each portion had a time to be rebuilt according to God's desire. But we cannot grow lack. We cannot uh, become stagnant. And we must find balance. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you on what it is that you do every single day. Um, and you listen, believe me, a little bit goes a long way. And so you might just do a little bit today and you do some tomorrow. Uh, those components, they're going to build until you see the bigger picture. So don't try to do everything all at one time. Just because we see the, the, the picture doesn't mean that we have to put the picture together all at one time in one day. That just does not happen. That's not even the way God created the heavens and the earth. Um, take a look at Genesis, uh, the first uh, couple of chapters, uh, as God went through and he did something on a certain day. We can take that as an example as well. Spend some time in the word of God on this week. I believe we're going to come and share more on tomorrow as we continue in different realms and areas of working with God. God. Uh, be sure to visit us on our website at angelferguson-ministries.com for our School of Ministries schedule as well as radio and television ministry, our publishing division, um, 
just a whole host of things that you can gather from our site. I love you without measure. Have a blessed day, everyone.